Dom Link, it's your way, and welcome to another video, welcome to another show. Welcome to a video that I really excited to make. I've been wanting to make this for a while, so let's go right into it. We're watching Ken Cobra uh, Father interview with your favorite son, which is the guy that made a uh, documentary with King Cobra. Um, <clears throat> today's video, you already see the title, you already see what is going on. We have, why is Dry Truth a genius story? Why was Dry Truth one of my favorite characters? Why is Dry Truth a, <coughs> one of the best written is person in history? Dry Truth becomes, see, I think you have to understand who is Dry Truth. Dry Truth is a person that's like, it's, oh, um, <laughs> it's amazing. I love this character. Dry Truth is again i don't even know where to start let's start with the office dyna dynamic we have this boss which is michael michael is not the best boss there's a lot of fucked up shit right and you got white truth which is your your classic kiss ass right but why should you present more than that i think in every street of society you be kiss ass you're drama we're gonna, gonna kiss ass with bosses you got the students People are going to get a kiss ass of the teacher. But, um, that's pretty much it. <coughs> there's this, there's a different way to react to authority. And right truth is actually a kiss ass. It's the growth of right truth. Why are we, I think nobody, nobody likes right truth in season one, in season two, in season three, in season four. The first time you watch the show, right truth is despicable. He doesn't care about the other people, he doesn't care about the, he, he cares about the work, he cares about the boss. So you see he has this good employee. I think the duality is what's important here. We want to care about Dunder Mifflin. We want to care about the employees there. We want to care about the people that are there. But technically, right, it's a mockumentary. It is a company of paper, right? Even they break the fourth wall in the ninth season with the sound guy. Give me a second. Oh yeah, see, Dwight Schrute, reality and reaction are simple reason. He doesn't care about the documentary. He doesn't care about that. He just wants to work. He see this, this, he's the, he's the hated role model employee. Comes in, does his job. We all work with that person. We all work with somebody that was better than us, that was very talented, that cared about his job, cared about money. See, the thing with Twice Truth is what they don't explore. You really have to watch the the entire show. See, with Twice Truth, what we learn later on is their there's commission involving the sales. Twice Truth might want that. You see, Twice Truth buys a building, the Dunder Mifflin building. He's very successful. Twice Truth is also extremely insecure. You see him. You see this when he's trying to be a a deputy. You see him when he's trying to be. A, a dojo you see that he has this symbol of inferiority right and there's multiple times where you talk about Moses and Moses who is a nutcase right let's be honest here is a nutcase but still in the fact in the fashion that they show Moses in the eyes of Dwight Dwight is the inferior one which is nuts see uh, Dwight is always gonna be trying to find himself and if you look at the Dwight, it's, it's very a character analysis. When you look at the Dwight, he, they, they made it a joke, but Dwight has so much, so many, right, fruit family tradition. In the eyes of Dwight, he's a fruit. It's not Dwight, he's a fruit. And I think he loves that identity there. He's trying to end his hand at B&B, he's trying to end at a wedding planner, he's trying to end in cooking, he's trying to end at being a sheriff, he's trying to end at being a manager of a business. Of a, a building, right? An owner of a building. And Dwight Schrute is such a beautiful character. There's so many instances where he, he, he fears with authority. See, there's, there's a part of me that believes that he kisses Michael ass as a person. But as a boss, he's very afraid of Michael. He's very afraid of what's going on, even though he's one of the best employees. When Michael has to fire somebody in the first episode, in the first season, Dwight thinks it's going to be him. He doesn't have a reason to think it's him, but he still believes it's him. I think... This is part of insecurity, right? And it's it's nuts. It's nuts because with Dwight Schrute, it's 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 
it's weird. It's very, very weird. See, there's this part of me that wants to believe that he's an asshole. And he probably is an asshole. I think Dwight... Having to deal with his own insecurity, having to deal with his own self, trying to find himself, always saw himself as as minor. You see, um, with Jim, Jim was this good-looking guy. He was super successful. He got the girl right. There's there's no instant. There's no instant that J Dwight ever loved Pam. I'm not gonna say Dwight ever loved Pam, but he respect Pam. He calls her. She's quite a strength. Um, she's hardworking. He respect Pam. He likes her. He does. She's his first friend. He likes Pam. He says he likes Pam as a person. See? And uh, he has those... So that, that does mean that he likes some of his co-worker. Right? And then Jim is the most popular, but Jim is the complete opposite. And Jim is able to make jokes. And Jim just is good-looking. See, Jim, Jim has everything to succeed. He has the looks. He has the charisma. He's funny. See, Jim would be... It's not because... I think to understand Dwight, you have to understand the relationship between Jim and Dwight. Why those two? Those two were salesmen. Um, if you look at those, they're the only salesmen in the company. Uh, who else is a salesman? Michael? Michael is the, the manager. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but who else is a salesman? Those two. See, Jim, Jim is your classical prodigy child, right? He has the looks, he has the... He has the, the talent, he can sell, he can charisma. I already told you guys why. And Dwight, well, the only way, he doesn't have the look, he's not funny, he's not personable, right? So the only thing that he has is hard work. So putting in good prices, making sure that his clients are, are satisfied, you know? And I'm sorry to say, but sometimes hard work isn't enough, right? So Dwight feels failure. He, he, he look at failure. You know what the craziest thing about Dwight? I just noticed that there was something here, right? Uh, just like a, a bridge on the nose and uh, my new glasses they have a bridge on the nose and I didn't notice Dwight Sorry about that noise. We're inside. I hope it helps. It's not a good lighting. Let me try something else I think the lighting is good here. I, I feel I feel like we tried to, to do something else um, See with Dwight Dwight start to shift as a good character Dwight start to shift the second there's a multiple reason why Dwight sh Dwight shifts, and it's such a good thing. We have the first one with Ryan when he has the he takes him out right, and he trying to teach him, and you realize that Dwight just want to be appreciated for who he is. He doesn't know how because he never had real friendship. He never had knows how because he never had profound bounds. He stopped himself from being friend with Pam because she was with his worst enemy, as he says. Then we have Ryan. And Ryan is kind of my co favorite, right? And um, Dwight sees this as this almost a front. And then he's like, nah, me and him can serve Michael. And there's not a, there, there's this theory, right? That Dwight wanted to train Ryan so he would beat, a, he would beat um, Jim. Kind of like a Goku Vegeta situation. Vegeta um, only pride and uh, training trunks is that he is able to to beat Gohan or Goten sorry um coming back to Dwight Dwight there's a couple of shifts there's the other shift where Ryan and he, he feels bad with Ryan he feels bad and actually apologize which is the first time he apologize there's this other um this other cases where uh Dwight is the owner of the company and he goes and he goes and he goes and he, he cuts on things he cuts on things and then you have Pam right who tells him, hey, you're going too far, you're losing friend. Then right away, Dwight makes a plan for Nate uh, to actually come in and help them, stopping him. And the way he does it is beautiful, but it's the reason why he does it that's more beautiful. See, Dwight, I don't think Dwight imagined himself as her friend. I think Pam saying, hey, you're losing your friend, I think it's a realization for Dwight to be, hey, there's this, there's this, um, sub, not subculture, but there's a subplot where they are my friend, you know? And the way he does it is he doesn't, really, he doesn't relinquish the power he has, but he helps them. And that's a good leader. A good leader isn't perceived as weak, but a good leader will provide the tool necessary for his followers to, 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 to advance in life, right? Which is A. Um, B, there's another case of Dwight, 
and it's with Angela. Angela who leaves him for somebody who's power. And this is a really big shift. It's something that you really have to pay attention to. It's a, it's something we really, really have to to listen to. You have to listen to the office a couple of times. Um, so we know Dwight has a problem with authority. He has an insecurity problem, an inferior uh, complex with authority. This is this is not new, right? Uh, so. It's tough because Angela leaving him for the center, right? And they were not together. They were not together. Uh, White chose Mike over Angela. And then when Angela finds somebody, it just happens to be one that is that has authority. And Dwight is, Dwight is weirdly okay with Angela moving on. And it's a kind of a sad story. It's kind of a sad story. It's a beautiful, Dwight is an amazing character. Wait a second. Sorry, I want to get this because I do like Dwight, and I think it's I think it adds to the to the video. Um, so Dwight, the reason why we love Dwight, such a beautiful characters. See, he, he's he's able to understand that Angela would choose the other guy over him, right? And at the end, we have the biggest shift in history of the Office. We have Dwight to become a good person. See, the reason why Dwight become a good person. He gains self confidence. You understand what he's done is enough. He doesn't need to be authority. He becomes a manager of Strengthen. He has a successful beat farm. He gets the girl. Dwight is the good ending. Dwight is a good ending. Dwight is the unsung hero for a person that is fun to like. He, he, he started as a person we start we like to dislike. It ends up being somebody we, we see as flaw. Flawed ends up as the hero the hero the hero of okay so you really have to pay attention to the office to understand that the first the first season are all about three uh four characters michael dwight pam and jim why are these four so important because they have the most screen time if you want to see the importance of the characters in the show you see at the screen time that's all you need to do next Michael leaves the show. Huh? Pam and Jim end up together, right? And at the end, Pam and Jim, they have this rocky relationship. Pam is still... <laughs> I don't even remember what Pam becomes. I don't even remember. Sorry. I didn't like Pam. I... I... <sighs> There's moments where I love Pam. But she's not my favorite character. Like, in season one, two, when she teases with... Jim and she's like, oh yeah, I like you, but I have Roy. I didn't like her when she started going out with Jim I really enjoyed her really enjoy her and then she started becoming more and more important because people like Jenna Fisher they Didn't like Pamela. They didn't like Pam Beasley They like Jenna Fisher She's seductive. She's pretty right everything to love and uh, She took more importance and she's like dude It's nice that you have more importance, but you start to show us something or something else who else changes Jim Jim also become the assistant manager. The reason why Jim become assistant manager is actually pretty precise. Michael was gonna leave the show. They need a character to replace him. They took Jim, which was the natural choice. They wanted to, it to the change to be re, to seem real, and Michael would have wanted Jim to be manager. There you go. Uh, we also have um, that's it. That's pretty much it. And who changes place? Nobody has a promotion. Nobody has a higher up. Pam promotion is because she's lying, right? And then you have Dwight, and those are the four main character. Uh, Dwight ends up being the most like it because he came from the farthest. Jim, when you see where he ends, he possibly been cheated on. He leaves the office. Jim also has this kind of the, this inferior context where he's shining. He's the ace. He's the superstar at a company business, at a paper company business. Is that enough for his life? No, no. There you go. That's pretty much it. So yeah, so this is what I wanted to talk about. Dwight, Dwight, Dwight Schrute. Well, he's my favorite character. That's pretty much it. Love you guys. Take it easy. Peace.